Good morning, DMV, and welcome to another edition of our Kissing the Community Public Affairs Show. Today, I have with me the state's attorney for gorgeous Prince George's County, Miss Aisha Brave Boy. She's also a fellow bike son. You know, ain't you <laughs> all day. Good morning, Aisha. Good morning. And thank you so much for, for being here. It's a it's an honor to have you. You know, when we talk about state's attorney is is a that's a big, a very high position yes. um to hold. And we know our, our county executive, Angela also Brooks, prior to was was the state's attorney. So That's correct. We're the, the top law enforcement office in the county. So it's a very serious job, but mm-hmm. a job that I love so much. Yeah. What what made you prior to being state's attorney, where were you and what were you doing um prior to? So I was a state delegate for eight years. Mm -hmm. I also have been a practicing attorney for almost 20 years. Wow. I can't believe I just said that. (laughs) That Um, (laughs) 20 years. Um, But, you know, for about 15 of those years, Mm -hmm. I've been working in juvenile diversion uh, with a group called the Community Public Awareness Council, otherwise known as CPAC. Okay. And we are the largest juvenile diversion program in Prince George's County Mm -hmm. and have diverted over 4,000 children. Children from our criminal justice system. Wow. So I have been so proud to have been a part of that. Myself, Phil Lee, who was the other co-founder, uh, we've made such progress in our county around our young people, and I want to continue that work as state's attorney. Yeah, I was just, um, I was. That's how I actually this this interview came to be through um, Phil Lee. We came yeah. to his program, and um, I was with Deputy Johnson. He said, "You got to come meet these these young people," and we just had a great conversation with them. Um, you know about life and and decisions and choices and how that affects you know things that we do and um, you know I, it, it got me so interested because I, I found out that essentially this program kind of saves them or stops them from having to necessarily go into the system absolutely so essentially when a, a, a juvenile is arrested um, they are uh, the charges go to a, a organization or a state agency called the Department of Juvenile Services or it's referred to as DJS okay. and that agency can uh, either refer that child for some type of diverted program or diversion program or uh, could refer that uh, child to the state's attorney's office for prosecution. Mm -hmm. And so um, the uh, CPAC was a really a go-to diversion program and still is a go-to diversion program for the Department of Juvenile Services. Um, This gives the child an opportunity to not be in the system, to not get the stigma of being a quote-unquote juvenile delinquent, Mm. and also helps them to make better choices in the future. I mean, the future is theirs, you know, and things don't just happen to us. We make things happen. Mm -hmm. And so we try to give those young people the tools they need to make better decisions for themselves. Absolutely. I think that's awesome. And when it comes to being the state's attorney, Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious myself, do you get all cases basically? Is that how that works? You kind of get on your desk like a pile of these cases every day? It it doesn't quite work that way. So we have um, several different units within the state's attorney's office that handle certain types of cases. Mm -hmm. So we have a homicide unit that handles our homicide cases. We have a special victims unit that handles the sex crimes and domestic violence crimes and things like that. Uh, We also have a financial crimes unit. Uh, We have a a unit that deals with gang crime. So essentially all of the cases will be distributed to one of those units. And then those uh, cases, which are a little bit more complex, complicated, uh, they come to me and my uh, leadership team to review and determine the best course of action in those types of cases. Got it. And then what kind of drew you to juvenile justice reform on on your end? What was it about? You know, again, you you have all these different departments, but what is it about the the juvenile justice reform that really attracts you? Well, it's an area I have a specific uh, expertise in and experience in. Mm -hmm. Um, In addition to that, I think it's the one area that we can make the greatest difference for the future of our county. If we can prevent our our young people from getting in the system mm-hmm. or returning as an adult, uh, then we have a safer community. Mm-hmm. And so it's so important that we get it right for our young people. It's the 
the best chance uh, to change someone's life is when they're younger. Not that we couldn't do it for older people, and we do that every single day, but right. the best chance we have to put someone on the best course is if we can get them there when they're young mm-hmm. uh, and hungry and ready for life and, and all the challenges of life and opportunities of life. That's when we want them to take life by the horns and say, hey, this is my life. I mm-hmm. want to make better choices. I've got people around me who believe in me, who are going to give mm-hmm. me a second chance. And I, you know, being a part of that process has been really great. So what I did coming into the state's attorney's office is decide that instead of our unit just being about prosecuting young people, Mm -hmm. we need to have a full service comprehensive unit that focuses on truly what is in the best interest of that child, which is actually the standard uh, for prosecuting uh, young people in the criminal justice system is best interest standard. And so um, we have other options that we can um, uh, that we can pursue with our young people. So many of them have mental health issues. So many of them are dealing with uh, addiction, Mm -hmm. uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse. Uh, We have children who are doing dealing with homelessness, violence in the families, violence in their Mm -hmm. communities. And it really is affecting them, affecting their behavior, Mm -hmm. affecting their their brain development and their impulse control. And so it in addition to our work as as uh, attorneys as lawyers um, I'm going to be bringing in our mental health experts and our and our clinical partners mm-hmm. so that they can help us determine um, with some of these children what is truly in their best interest so that we're mm-hmm. not further subjecting them to trauma when they've already been traumatized for mm-hmm. many years often in their own homes wow I'm, hey this makes me feel great <laughs> that we have you as a state's attorney Thank for you, you to have that um, that level of expertise and to, to bring that into the state's attorney office, I think, is incredible. Uh, we're talking to our state's attorney for Prince George's County, Aisha Brave Boy, right now. Uh, moving on, I, wa- I want to also ask you about vehicular fatalities. Yeah. Um, this is a big deal right now in Prince George's County. We Most recently, we saw the um, the six people that, that died uh, in a crash off of 301. Um, we've seen multiple times off of 210 down in Fort Washington, um, major serious crashes, um, and a lot of times alcohol is involved or certain things, high speed is involved. Tell us a little bit about what your um, your office is doing when it comes to vehicular fatalities. Well, I, I appreciate you bringing this up. And I can tell you that at this point, I can't talk about any specific case just because uh, those investigations are ongoing. Right. But I can tell you in general, we have had a large number of motor vehicle fatalities as a result primarily of um, uh, individuals who are impaired, mm-hmm. either by alcohol, Primarily it's alcohol, and some also have THC or some other uh, drug in their system. And so um, it's more difficult to measure uh, the uh, drug levels in in your body because drugs leave the body a lot quicker than alcohol. So it's a little bit easier to detect alcohol and to measure alcohol, which is why a lot of these cases, when they're tried, they're tried as a result of the blood alcohol content Mm. or BAC. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, we, uh, you know, we have to pursue those cases. We have to prosecute those cases. Um, we often get convictions. I mean, these are some some of the most difficult cases that we have to uh, try because we know that the individual behind the wheel didn't intend to kill anyone that night. Right. It's not like, you know, they went to a shootout and, yeah. and, and they intended to kill someone. Yeah. But when you get behind the wheel, mm-hmm. our office has to assume that you're willing to take that risk, not just for yourself, but everyone on the roadway. Mm -hmm. And so if you uh, get behind the wheel and you're impaired and you kill someone or you seriously harm someone, we are going to prosecute you and we're going to seek maximum penalties because we have to send a message that this is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. We also have to do our, our best to provide justice for the victims. Right. In many of these case, cases, lives are lost. Young lives are lost. Yeah. And so I have a responsibility uh, to the public uh, and to our victims. Um, but in addition to, to doing our job as prosecutors, we are also stepping up to the plate to send the message around driving focused, mm-hmm. sober, and safe. Mm-hmm. So we have a campaign that we're kicking off in April. Okay. And April happens to be Distracted Driver uh, Awareness Month. Mm-hmm. But we're going to use that opportunity to send the message to our community that it's important for them to drive responsibly. Mm-hmm. And so we're working on a big uh, event. Uh, I think 
it's the second Saturday in or third Saturday, sorry, in, in April. So we'll share that information with you all. We hope that you all will join us as partners in the community yeah. to prevent these types of deaths from occurring. And how does in general, how can we keep up with your department and your office? Is there like are we are we connected to you via Twitter or, or any yes. of these these social yes. media outlets? We, we 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 have Twitter. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. So we are out there. We also obviously have a website mm-hmm. also that's connected to the county's website. Okay. But we are PG SAO News. Okay. <laughs> so right. if you want to find us on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, you can just Google uh PGSAO News. Yeah, I, I want to ask you, Aisha, how do you um, maintain your mental health in all of this? Because, you know, I mean, at best I've seen like SVU <laughs> and all that type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But um, as you said, you see a lot of heartbreaking scenarios yeah. and you have to prosecute it. And we're, we're, we've seen um, right now Kamala Harris, she's running for president. And as a as a prosecutor, like, you know, they're, they're bringing up like, things that she's prosecuted or situations that she's prosecuted and we know prison reform is a big conversation um but again your job essentially yeah. is to prosecute to to i guess bring well, things well, to well, justice you know the right? truth is our job is to seek justice mm-hmm. and often that involves in involves prosecution but sometimes it involves other things just just like uh, we talked about earlier with diversion opportunities and also uh, educational opportunities that Mm -hmm. we have as well Um, but primarily where you see us is in the courtroom prosecuting individuals who've committed offenses or who are alleged to have committed offenses in Mm -hmm. our community and that's important too because we all deserve safe communities but going back to what you asked me about how do I Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, deal with all of this Mm -hmm. you know you know I, I I am blessed to have a wonderful church home, uh, the sanctuary at Kingdom Square, where we worship under the leadership of um, Pastor Anthony, Anthony Macklin. He's a wonderful uh, spiritual advisor. Um, I also uh, make sure that I do my part in terms of medita- meditation, mm-hmm. and, and I also have begun to exercise a whole lot more than I ever <laughs> have. But, but it actually helps me uh, to kind of focus on what's important in life, mm-hmm. um, and, and I realize that I can't help others if I don't help myself. So I need to be in the best physical and mental shape in order to make good decisions uh, on behalf of the residents of the county. And and so those are the, some of the ways that I keep myself, uh, you know, focused. Yeah. Do, do you ever get to, like, go to the movies and stuff? Because I feel like you got to have these oh, yeah. security and stuff all, at all times. <laughs> I mean, this is this is a high profile job. Do you ever get to, like, kick back or go I, to movies? I do. I do. I, look, I'm a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. So all I right like to now. hang out with my, my sorors. Um, <laughs> so I do go to events with them I also um, you know I, I like to walk my dogs mm-hmm. I lo- I have these two cute little uh, have a poos they're called <laughs> a half havanese half poodle and I go I walk them and th- that's probably one of the biggest joys of my life just walking yeah. <laughs> them around the neighborhood so I do find ways to relax mm-hmm. and kick back and enjoy I love spending time with my family mm-hmm. I have great parents um, my father is actually from Grenada mm-hmm. and so um, I'm hoping to be able to get away to the Caribbean uh, nice. <laughs> Later this year, just for for a little bit, just yeah. to um, reconnect with family and have some really good Caribbean food as well. Amen. To that. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. No, I'm with, do you guys get like a? Da- is there a downtime for for cases where you don't have to necessarily be uh, in court and on trial and all that stuff? Well, you know, we're on call twenty four seven. To be honest with you, I oh. mean, obviously the court is open during the week, mm-hmm. but even on the weekends, um, things happen. So if there's a homicide that occurs or a major crime occurs, I'll get those calls and I'll take them. And I'll uh, so a lot of times I'm on the phone with the police chief mm-hmm. or my homicide chief or others who you know are involved in the criminal justice system. But it is literally 24 hours, seven days a week. You know, mm-hmm. this is the office that I'm I. I'm holding, and and I take that very seriously. Now, this is the office that you had to run for. Yes. Um, so again, I, I said, as a resident of Prince George's County, I voted for you. Thank um, you. Yes, yeah, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. What what is that like to campaign for this? And that, how long? I don't quite know how long you hold this position, but do you have to campaign sure. again? How does this work? Yeah, so it's um, a four year position. So okay. every four years, I'll have to run for this position. I have to tell you, I love being the state's attorney. It is a, it's a awesome job. It's a hard job, but it's mm. a wonderful job. 
Um, I was a state delegate, so I was familiar before running for this office with running for office. I was a two-term state delegate. I also was the first black woman to run independently for a statewide office in Maryland. So I ran for attorney general. I did not win, (laughs) (laughs) um, but that was back in 2014. Um, But I stayed active in the community. I love, love, love helping people. That's really my biggest passion Mm -hmm. is helping others and seeing others smile and win. I want everyone to win. So I just, I always try to help people. Um, Like uh, back in, uh, I think it was uh, 2015, 2016, I was contacted by the Teamsters. They were about to lose uh, 700 jobs in Prince George's County. And they called on me for help. And I worked uh, with our then Senator uh, C. Anthony Muse Mm -hmm. uh, to negotiate with uh, Safeway and their parent company, Albertsons, Mm -hmm. uh, to save 700 jobs. We worked our butts off for three months. Um, And finally, we got them to agree to stay here in Prince George's County. And guess what? Now they're actually expanding uh, the jobs, you know, at that particular facility. So um, I I feel like, you know, my life's work is going to be measured by how many people I help. And I just Mm -hmm. love helping people. No, Aisha, I, I really appreciate you. I'm glad that I got the chance to sit across from you and have Thank this you. conversation from with you. And I think there's so many people listening that will really appreciate this conversation as well. Because, again, we see you. We see the nice pictures and the billboards <laughs> all over the, the Prince George's County area. But sometimes you don't always get to hear um, who these people are, you know, who you are just as a human being um, and understanding what you go through on your side and how you're helping people. And, um, you know, I just I really, really love what you're doing as far as juvenile justice reform and and how you're saying you know i'm not just here trying to prosecute i mean that's part of the job but you're trying to find solutions and options for residents absolutely um, which is imperative and and before i let you go um i do want to ask we we recently saw a story of a, a a man that's being let out of prison for murder um less than nine years and a murder of a young lady, a teenager at that. And so I wanted to ask you about the issue of early release for violent offenders um, and and what you all uh, are facing, the challenges you all are facing, what you all are doing um, regarding these types of situations. You know, as you can imagine, uh, I was outraged when I heard about the early release of this uh, individual. Um, The mother rightfully is upset, disappointed. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the plea deal that occurred around uh, that incident occurred well before I became state's attorney. And uh, there was nothing that we, our office could do actually to prevent him from being released because he was able to accrue what's called diminishing credits while he was incarcerated. And uh, he received those credits because of his behavior. So he probably did not cause problems while he was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. He probably took classes and, 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 participated in in, in work uh, or job training programs and uh, individuals are allowed to accrue credits through a state uh, program Mm -hmm. uh, to reduce the amount of time for their confinement. Uh, But unfortunately, what that does in um, many cases, especially with violent offenders, is that it really provides what looks like a real injustice Mm -hmm. uh, to the community and especially to the family and next of kin of those who were killed uh, by those individuals. And so while we want people to behave while they're in jail, while we Mm -hmm. want them to seek rehabilitation and education and other things, we also must have real truth in in, in terms of our sentencing. So if we tell a family he's got 15 years, he needs to do 15 years, Mm -hmm. especially for a crime like murder. Right. It's not like he pleaded to involuntary manslaughter. Mm-hmm. This was second degree murder, mm-hmm. period, that he was convicted of. And for him uh, to only do less than nine years mm-hmm. confined uh, is it, heartbreaking. And I'm going to work with um, one of my favorite legislators, uh, Delegate C.T. Wilson from Charles County, who was a former prosecutor, uh, to look at uh, legislation to change the amount of uh, uh, credits that an individual convicted of at least 
when we look at the issue of murderers right, right. get <laughs> can accrue yeah. uh, while they're uh, confined. They're there for a reason, mm. and uh, we need to make sure that uh, our community is safe, and we also need to make sure that our victims and their families feel like they really receive justice. Absolutely. And as a community, what can we do on our end, or is it one of those things where this is kind of like up to those of you that are the elected <laughs> officials who are kind of in what? charge? Nothing's up to us. Mm. We are we represent your will, the people's will. Mm. And so I'd love to have these discussions out in our community around this issue because we have to go to Annapolis next year with this legislation and we expect to face resistance. And so we want to have a community of people behind us. And so I would love to work with you, uh, Angie, um, to, uh, you know, educate the community Mm -hmm. to get community input and opinions because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people (laughs) think this is the right uh, Right. system. (laughs) You know, I I can't pretend that I know everything, but what I do know is that I represent uh, the people of Prince George's County Mm -hmm. and they can help to guide me in making decisions. But I believe this is a conversation our community needs to have. Mm -hmm. I think if we look at uh, sentencing for nonviolent offenders, there are people who have committed nonviolent offenses who are spending way more time in jail Mm -hmm. than this individual who murdered a 14 year old. Mm. Yeah. And, and there was a, I know in the article I was reading, there was also like a rape charge, but that got dropped or or something to that. Yeah. At the time the the prosecutors decided to move forward with just the, um, the murder charge and it, and it's most unfortunate because Mm. the DNA wasn't found in this young girl's mouth just by happenstance. Mm. She was raped. And and so I, and I often ask like when you see these types of scenarios, does this happen because he had a great attorney, or is it like how do we get into these situations? Just like you said, mm-hmm. where someone who might have a nonviolent offense ends up with a whole lot of time, and and someone like this is able to, you know, get out on good behavior, get these credits in under nine years. Is that a testament to the, the attorney that they have? Or? Not not always. Um, okay. A lot of times it's a sentencing guidelines. So certain offenses carry heavier, sentence, uh, heavier uh, sentences. Certain types of offenses carry heavier sentences. Okay. Uh, sometime have a, some sentences have a mandatory period of confinement. Mm-hmm. Um, but in addition to that, sometimes the prosecutors are weighing the st- the strength of their case okay. and if they can uh, get a, a plea deal sometimes they opt to do that because it may be difficult to prove beyond a reasonable doubt in court mm. and so sometimes uh, they're able to you know get the def- the the defense attorney and the and the defendant to agree uh, to a plea um, but it's it's tough. Those decisions are tough. And the families need to be involved in those decisions. And they also need to understand not only what it what does this mean in terms of the sentence imposed, but also what it means in terms of potentially the time served. Mm-hmm. And so um, in my office now, um, when we uh, when we have to offer a plea or we believe a plea is appropriate in a case, we talk to the family. We bring them in face to face. I often sit down with families and, and we discuss the strength of the case and why we may be making a certain decision and how much time uh, the person is agreeing to in the plea and how much time that person will have to do if, uh, you know, because of our diminishing credit system. I think it's important to be transparent with families. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, this this work, this, this criminal justice work isn't easy. Mm-hmm. It's not perfect. You think because we know someone did it, then, you know, we're going to convict <laughs> them and we're going to lock them up forever. That's yeah. just not how it works in the real world. Mm-hmm. And so we try to be very real with our uh, victims and, and with their families mm-hmm. uh, so that they understand uh, what the individual will likely be facing um i just think it's important to be honest and that's that's how we run our office now awesome well aisha brave boy it's been a pleasure to speak with you um thank you so much for just sharing who you are with us today and, and what your department is working so hard on and and we appreciate you we appreciate the work you're doing to anybody listening uh prince george's county residents in particular any last words uh for them and 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 just you know 
uh, what we should look forward to or what we should be looking out for from from you all? Well, first, I just want to thank them for their vote of confidence in me. I mean, I won by a, an overwhelming majority mm-hmm. of the votes, and I I am humbled by that. Mm-hmm. Let me just say, it's not about be, being uh, bragging about that. It's about being humbled because I truly, truly, truly love our community. I look forward to serving them, uh, hopefully for many, many years to come. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely look out for um, some of the new initiatives that we're going to be launching uh, okay. around criminal justice reform. Um, there's some exciting new things coming up. Okay. And I look forward to, again, working with you uh, in, in terms of informing our community. Yes, and, and I definitely with the young people. You know, I'm yes. very big on young people. I feel the exact same you, you as you when it comes to them being the future and, and, and what type of investment we're putting into the mm-hmm. to our future um, and just giving them that opportunity to make some changes and make better decisions and better choices and not putting them in situations where it, it makes trauma worse or yes. uh, we make what may already be something going wrong, make it worse for them, but maybe really invest in trying to change their, their heart, their spirit, their mind and get them right. So I love that. And thank and, you. And thank you. Now, last question. Do you see yourself since, since if we're looking at, you know, the trajectory, trajectory of an Angela also Brooks, you know, trajectory wise, do you kind of see or would you be interested in at some point moving on to like county executive? You know, it's hard to get past this job right here. Okay. I love it so much. Mm. And I just got here. Oh, and so yeah. I've got a lot of work uh, <laughs> ahead lot of me on. and a lot of initiatives I'm trying to roll out. So I'm focused okay. on this job. Thank you, though, for asking. <laughs> Just curious, just check it, just check it. But all right, sounds good. And again, um, we'll put all your information up on KYSDC.com. But awesome. uh, salute to you, Aisha Brave Boy, Thank and you. everything that you're doing. You know, in this